hello everyone. It's such a beautiful, peaceful morning and nice gentle rain. So I thought I might just come out and give you a quick tour and show you what's blooming in the garden right now. I have my Candy Crush. This is a hearty hibiscus and it's a little droopy from the rain, but it is just a beautiful, beautiful hearty hibiscus. You'll see I have my crepe myrtles. They're all tethered up on the fence. Um, the weight of them is really something, especially when it rains, but absolutely beautiful blooms. That's called Twilight Purple. And there's a new addition to the garden. I'll put a link to this down below. Uh, it's a beautiful blown glass bird and I just love it. I have some uh, Millennium Allium looking really pretty right now. And these are some dahlias. That's what these stakes are for. I've had some people ask. Um, these are polka varieties, so I'll be excited to see how they come along. But I think it's nice to maybe show you guys when things are nice and peaceful and shaded like this. The, the plants really seem to look beautiful when it's nice and shaded. These are sombrero yellow cone flower and a baby gem boxwood in this pot here. That's a Pugster Blue Dwarf Butterfly Bush. And I do have some of the Gum Frina, um, which I like, but I don't love. It seems to be quite a bunny magnet. So I'm really trying to not plant things that are making the bunnies come to the garden. So, uh, but I do like the plants, they're very pretty little bursts of pink there and they have some white lobelia kind of tucked around. This is a um, Wizard of Oz Veronica that's putting on a second flush of blooms. I just planted some milkweed. That's what those two little sticks are. I don't know if I'll see anything this season from those. Spiral spruce, Alberta spruce in the back. Our wisteria is hanging down a bit low uh, in our window box. Ooh, forget about that. I had some budworm damage and it's just a wreck this year. But the wisteria, I'm gonna clip back and uh, cut some of the sections out from that. Um, we're gonna be remodeling our shed into a greenhouse. My husband is drawing up the 3D renderings and things now. I'll actually put a little clip of that up so you can see, but we're gonna be redesigning this entire shed hopefully uh, before winter, that's the plan, but take it slow and pace ourselves and get a greenhouse in here, which would be an absolute dream and, and really help me out so much uh, with all of the, you know, seed starting and, you know, things I'm starting to add to the garden that need to be in a greenhouse or moved into the house like Eugenia topiaries or uh, my, my fig tree, which I kept in the garage last year. So having a greenhouse would just be a, an absolute dream. So that's the plan and, and we're gonna try and make that happen. And then let me just give you guys a little look over here. Here's the birdhouse that I just added from Good Directions. It's so pretty, I love it so much. Nice breeze right now. Now this area last year was all gravel and just a little tiny bench. So boy, has it come a long way. In this area here, I planted some lamb's ear. And then I also planted some diamond frost euphorbia just for a little white sparkle. And here's the pink cushion flowers that I planted back in spring looking great still. And I do have some foxglove and one blooming, which I am very excited to show you. This is Camelot White Foxglove. And I planted these from seed inside under the grow lights. And it was my first experiment with uh, grow lights this year. And I'm really happy with that. Isn't that exciting? So I do have a few of those. Here's another one here planted all in this section. So I'm just loving it. And then I particularly love the Everio, Everillo, that's how you pronounce it, uh, Carex in the back there. It just has that glow that kind of just radiates this whole section. Um, and I think really complements nicely with the Blood Good Japanese Maple. Those two kind of contrasting colors look really great together. 
and this is a rock and play in the blues salvia this came back for me this year uh, i know it is often um, considered an annual sorry i had to break there a minute there's a squirrel Hmm, I just had to chase him away. So anyway, uh, Rock and Play in the Blues, Salvia, considered an annual in most areas here also, I believe. Um, and this came up again. What's funny is I pulled a bunch of others out. I think I thought they were weeds uh, and I never expected it to come out. And then I kind of recognized the foliage and I stopped myself and thought, I think that's the Rock and Play in the Blues, Salvia. So I left it be. And here it is in all its glory looking beautiful. Um, so note to self, I'm just gonna put little stakes and markers just to indicate that it's a no weed zone and not to pull. So for next year, I'll be more prepared with that. And then this is a Miss Molly butterfly bush, really beautiful magenta flowers. It does need deadheading right now. And then in the back, whoop, you can see I've got a limelight hydrangea and that will grow taller and fill in that space. So for right now, it's kind of unbalanced and I've got the taller things in the front, but as time goes along, that will, you know, rise up here and fill this space. So I said, you know, we've got the blood good Japanese maple, which is just so pretty the way the sun shines on that foliage. I just love it. And the plan was to kind of obscure and hide this peak from my neighbor's garage. Uh, at one point we did have a, another Japanese maple. This is an October glory maple, by the way, in the corner that I planted. I actually planted that when I was uh, pregnant with my first son, Leo. I'll never forget it because it was hot and I was out here planting uh, this tree. So it would have been seven years ago, a uh, little over seven years ago, he just turned seven. Um, but I figure with that and this tree, you know, it'll form a nice canopy to kind of hide that structure there. The emerald green arborvitae in the back are just looking outstanding. They have taken and just look so great in this space, creating that green layer, you know, to enjoy all through the seasons. I've got some more limelights in the back there and a fountain grass or a penicetum there. And this is a weeping white spruce that I've transplanted from another area in the garden. I did just clip back the Cleome here. That's these white and pink. These reseed prolifically. That's one reason I cut back, but I really did just wanna show the limelight, which is kind of badly flopping right now, but when it's not heavily rained on, the limelight stands up really nicely. Um, but just to show you, uh, if I can find some. On the Cleome, they have here some. These really pretty to look at uh, seed pods. So they will just drop and reseed all over the place. The mother plants, these plants will die back. And then you'll have some new baby plants from the seeds that it drops. Let me back up here. Pretty birds sound today. So I just uh, planted up this container as well. This is a, a green mountain boxwood. I got it from Lowe's. And the ultimate plan here will be to make it into a cone shape. Um, so it's a little misshapen right now. You know, it's the end of the season. So uh, I'll be working on that and shaping it the way I'd like it to look. And I planted it with some lobelia around the base there. And some, you know, the bubblegum, Vista Supertunia, and these are Prairie Sun Rudbeckia, which I absolutely love. Um, these are very very uh, prolific rebloomers. You can see some new buds back there. So if you cut these, you know, you'll keep getting more blooms. And I did just cut them for an arrangement and they just do wonderful. And then I've got the Royal Frost Birch here. I just love the new birdhouse. I think it just sets off this whole area and forms a really nice visual structure. You almost have kind of like a triangle with that being like the period or the, you know, the punctuation there. I hear Linda Vodder talk about punctuation in the garden a lot. And I feel like, you know, I'm kind of starting to get it, <laughs> trying to get it. Lots of work ahead of me. And that's a color guard yucca in the back there. Lots of weeds right there, you guys. There's my weeds. Um, no man's land back there. 
Then I have a really beautiful uh, miscanthus in a pot back there. I've had that for a couple of years, right back there. And that will get really big and beautiful and it sure looks nice in the fall time, especially it has really pretty plumes that come up. And swinging around here, this is all new as well. Love this bench, I got that from Gardener Supply. And the urns here, I got those from Lowe's, very affordable, they're concrete, they do have drainage holes and they were only $30 a piece, which you can't beat that. And I just added some lantana with uh, the blue dwarf morning glory, the uh, evolvulus, I laugh every time I say that name, uh, but they just look so pretty in these urns. And I did just, sorry, I have like a mosquito flying at me. I did just do a little bit of tweaking on this window box. I added the Diamond Mountain Euphorbia and I love these little bamboo hoops. I bought them shaped this way, by, by the way, you guys on Amazon. Um, someone had asked me how to shape bamboo. Uh, I guess you could soak the pieces and, and bend them. Uh, I bought them like this. <laughs> um, and then Lobelia in here. And it's looking a little sad right now because it just got rained on, but you gotta get the idea. And then I've got the new Dawn Rose that I trained along the front here. Maybe I'll get another flush of blooms out of it. And just the white lobelia kind of tucked all around. This is Gara and my lavender row here. I really was excited to show you guys the dahlia uh, along the fence line here. It's just looking so beautiful right now and a picture just did not cut it. So I'm just going to stop talking. I'll, I'll link to what the varieties are below, but I just want to kind of peacefully walk through here and show you guys the dahlia. I just added this lavender topiary. I got that from Home Depot. I think it's so beautiful and it smells so nice. And my geranium window boxes are still looking really beautiful. And I just put a couple grasses in here and some lobelia. I love the lobelia. And that's the lemon coral sedum. These are dwarf English boxwood. And I've had these for a few years and they're looking 
really beautiful. Down here, that's a scaviola fan flower in my little bunny statue there and a pancake arborvitae here. I use those in my window boxes at winter and they are just beautiful, just soft foliage. I usually have a candle in this little lantern, but um, it's been raining a bunch, so I'm letting it dry out. And just a new little seating area that we added and I think it looks so pretty. I'm really happy with it. I come out here quite a bit. And here's the little candle that goes in that lantern. And then just a little grouping on the table here. I've got two myrtle, and in the center is a Eugenia. And these will need to go into a greenhouse or inside your house in bright light in the colder temperatures. I'm not an expert, um, but I do appreciate them and I'm trying to learn more about them. I think they're so beautiful. And then over here, I'd just like to show you, I started noticing that the swallowtail caterpillars were definitely finding my dill. So I was very excited about that. Um, as you guys might know, if you do anything with caterpillars or butterflies, um, they will try and make their chrysalis in a different location than their host plants. But I got really lucky and I have a couple chrysalis in here. They decided to stick around. See that one right there? And then there's another one in the back here. Oh, it's just so fascinating to me. I, I just love it. Um, we come out here and look at them and just think it is the coolest thing. So this has become a little kind of area. That's why I have this little cover here too. Um, I, I did that to protect the caterpillars so they would not become lunch immediately from the birds and it did seem to help and it helped you know kind of cool off the plants too in the full sun heat that I get here and then we have another Eugenia here so all these things will definitely benefit from a greenhouse environment um, they would not make it uh, in our zone 7 you would need some pretty warm temperatures to be able to keep something like this going outdoors through the winter months. I'm just really happy to show you guys everything uh, looking so pretty in the garden, so peaceful. I feel the gardens have really helped through these times. I'm sure you feel that way too. Uh, I'm here watching all the videos of my garden friends on YouTube and all the pictures on Instagram and just getting so much joy and inspiration from all those beautiful things. But that's it. I just wanted to quickly come out and do an update. The mood kind of struck me spontaneously because I thought it was so pretty out here taking pictures of the dahlia. I hope you all are doing really well and enjoying your gardens and just getting so much uh, enjoyment from the garden and your flowers or vegetables, just all of it. It's uh, really just having a calming effect on life in general right now. It's starting to rain a bit more now. So I'll just stop here and I thank you guys for joining me in my garden today. Have a great day.